standing at the headwaters of the Mississippi River at Itasca State Park in Minnesota. The headwaters were supposedly discovered by Schoolcraft in 1832. But Lake Itasca, which you can see in the distance there, uh, is not the true beginning of the Mississippi River. Because in 1836, a French emigre scientist, Joseph Nicollet, found the lake itself was fed by springs. And those are the true head of the Mississippi River. So, we've come here in winter, and what we're going to do is we are going to go in search of those springs. It's much more, much easier to well, as I mentioned, uh, Joseph Nicollet um, traced the source of the Mississippi River um, upstream from, uh, you know, Lake Itasca. So I'm standing on the banks of Nicollet Creek in Itasca State Park, and this spring-fed creek runs through what's known as Nicollet's Valley, and we're going to follow it um, to find the true source of the Mississippi River. Um, but I'm not going to walk up through through that. We're actually just going to follow the Nicollet Trail in the park. According to Nicollet, the springs feeding Lake Itasca drain into the west arm of the lake. And you can see the west arm right here. And so I have been hiking up to Nicollet's Trail in the park. Uh, and have now arrived at what's called Nicollet's Cabin. Um, but uh, it's a little interesting because this, this was merely named in honor of Nicollet. And it wasn't actually you know, built by him or lived in um, by him or anything like that. Um, but it is a convenient um, place because we are very close to what is shown on the map as Nicollet's Springs, which are some springs which do indeed contribute um, to the Mississippi River. I've descended the very steep wall of Nicollet Lake, and I have come to a place that, on the Brower map at least, is called Nicollet Springs. Um, and here is one of them. That's very colorful. Um, you can see it's uh, depositing iron uh, in one place. It's uh, heavily overgrown uh, with moss. Um, and another here. And uh, kind of goes off into a, a spring run there. Uh, it, several gallons per minute but this uh spring um you know it might be a historic one is um, not at the very uh, headwaters of the mississippi river so we are going to have to continue um, up the valley well if we follow that very colorful red green spring downhill Follow the spring run, um, we find that uh, it meets uh, water draining uh, from more of Nicollet Springs. Um, and then they combined uh, to form this spring run that runs out to Nicollet Lake, which you can see um, in the distance there. Uh, it's looking very cold and revenant-ish uh, at this time of year. But um, over on the, uh, the west side, um, just beyond the tree line, uh, there is a feature on the Brower map um, shown as uh, Spring Ridge. Apparently with a long line of springs draining down into this same valley. Um, but alas, I do not have time to go over there uh, today, more especially with all the wolf tracks I've seen uh, in the woods. Um, the wolves are on the prowl, so I'm going to defer that task to some other time.
Well, finally, I'm here at the uppermost sources of the Mississippi River on this. I just walked up over this, what appears to be a frozen beaver pond in a forested amphitheater. Um, and I was warned at the park office that there are quite a few wolves um, in the woods just now. But um, so where we're at, if we look at the classic Brower map, we are at a place that is called Mississippi Springs, right there. And that's where the water ultimately starts. So what do we see here? Um, well, here is a typical spring that I found uh, in this area. And kind of follow up the spring run. Very easy to see in winter. You see why we do spring hunting in winter. Um, the comparatively warm groundwater uh, melts everything around and makes it easy to find. And you wouldn't just wouldn't see this in summer at all. It'd be just lost in the vegetation. But the most remarkable thing about this spring, from an ecological standpoint, if I zoom in there, is there's a lot of watercress in here. Um, an otherwise uh, unremarkable ecological observation because many springs have watercress, except for the fact that watercress is technically an invasive. It was introduced to this country, uh, to North America, in the 1830s from Eurasia. And so um, it is in that time period, it has made its way. Um, all the way up here to the headwaters of the Mississippi River.